Thank you very much, and it's really, really nice to be here. Not least because you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about this particular issue, and when I talk to other people who work for other green parties around the world trying to communicate, we all have one crisis, one thing that makes us feel really bad, which is how can it be that in almost every country in the West, people say that the climate crisis is the most important thing or the second most important thing, and yet the party that they represent, the polling figures suggest a completely different thing. So why is this? What's happening? Well, I, I don't know the answer, but that's why I'm here, to take notes, to listen. But I have a few, few simple suggestions. One is, and it's been touched on by many people, it's optimism. I think that's obvious. Voters vote for optimistic people. You see that in American elections most of all, but you see it everywhere. But there's also a thing I think we miss. It's very peculiar that, that there have been many successes. When I was a boy, everybody talked about the ozone layer and the ozone hole. That has been cured, you know? And I remember seeing it on the news. I was passing by in an airport, and it was about number, item number five on Sky News. Oh, the ozone hole, it's no longer a problem. We don't talk enough about successes. We don't talk about rivers that are now full of fish again. We don't make the point to the public that action does lead to results, and has done, and always will do, and that's why it's worth doing. As well as, you know, the, the, the doom narrative. I mean, if, if we really believe that, what's the point in doing anything? We don't believe that and it's not worth talking about. The second thing is we don't tell stories simply enough. You know, the truth is, and I've really learned this in the Green Party here, that the solutions are technocratic, and they're difficult, and they're big, and they're hard to get your head around, and they use words like Lulu CF, and nature restoration law, and, and you know, megawatts, and gigawatts, and so on, and nobody understands that in, 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 in the ordinary world. We, we tell stories, and that's what we should learn from journalism. Journalists tell stories because they're used to telling all kinds of complex stories. We're not the only complex thing out there. We're one of many things. We, we need, in one, some ways, to be more modest about that, and we need to tell simple stories, and we have to accept that sometimes just talking about one person in a kind of simplistic, slightly cliched way will make more impact than, than making the big narrative that people just don't get. Third thing I would say is, and this is certainly a mistake I made when I, when I, when I came into green communications, what works in one country doesn't work in another country. We, you know, the, the environmental movement is global. That's what makes it very exciting to be part of, and we can all draw inspiration from that. But the truth is that many countries, like the United States or Germany, they are already being affected by climate change in quite devastating ways. You know, whole towns are disappearing in tornadoes and floods. That hasn't happened here yet. And it probably won't happen here for a while, judging by you know, what's been going on. And you know, Irish people are very, very unusual this way. We're, we're among the least likely in the world to be climate deniers. But we're also among the least likely in the world when asked to believe that we personally will be affected by climate change. And that may be, may be the truth, actually, here. You know, if it goes up two degrees, well, it won't be the end of the world. But it will be the end of the world, obviously, for the global south. It will be the end of the world for people in Africa. And we, we, we probably need a different message to, to, I don't know, the east coast of the United States, where they're experiencing climate change in all its kind of devastating forms already. And the last point I would make is I think we're too polite in the, uh, in the, in the kind of green movement. I think we, we let people off. We, you know... We don't call people out, and I know this, I disagree then with some of the speakers here. I, I think somebody who drives an SUV, I think that's, you know, that's not a great thing. But nobody ever criticizes them. And I wonder why. And I wonder, are we just a little bit too kind of easygoing about stuff, too reluctant to, to criticize? Because our opponents criticize us all the time. They, they, they lie, they, they, they invent, they, they catastrophize. Uh, yes, I think we're, we're a little bit too polite. So they're my, my four little ideas. Thanks very much indeed.